let's take a look at this affiliate niche site or authority site. We're going to critique it. We are going to take a look at the good parts, maybe some things that could be improved. And I'll talk about some of the metrics like estimated traffic, the domain rating, and a few other things. You can follow the link in the description to get more information about those, plus the Amazon affiliate program. And that'll be the link over to Niche Site Project. The site that we're looking at here is called Own the Yard. And it was a public case study situation by Spencer Hawes over at Niche Pursuit. So there's actually a link in the description. So you'll be able to check out all the information from Spencer. And one thing that I can note is the last reported income for the site was in April of 2021. And that was $5,200 for that specific month. The site was created back in August of 2018. There are approximately uh, over 100,000 keywords ranking in the top 100. The estimated monthly visitors are over 55,000. And we're going to hop over and look at hrefs to see more information. Domain rating is 39. The domain authority is 25. And it looks like there are about 822 pages indexed over on Google. So let's have a quick look at hrefs so that we can get a little bit more data there. So 58,000 organic traffic. We see the 114,000 keywords. And this graph here represents the backlinks. And you can see sort of in the middle of 2021, it sort of skyrocketed in a very serious way. We can also look at the organic traffic and see that there's been a lot of growth over time. And just generally, the site has been growing. There was a little downturn there in the middle of 2020 from not necessarily from COVID, but it looks like maybe there was an algorithm update there. So from here, I will uh, mention again that Niche Pursuit Spencer Haas has all this information, Niche Site Project 4, and he links to all of the information, all the posts from this link here. So certainly check it out if you want more information. Let's look at the homepage here. We see it's a pretty simple layout. I believe this, if I remember right, is a Genesis, uh, or sorry, a Generate Press theme, Generate Press theme. And it's very simple. It's just a couple accent colors and that's it. We see a very simple navigation up here and just links out to specific posts. We scroll down and we see there's just more information, uh, very high quality images, very interesting uh pictures just in general. Uh, there's ants here trying to take a berry away. There's a chipmunk with its face full of, uh, I presume, nuts of some kind. But as we scroll down here, you can see the homepage just gets you out to the specific uh, pages on the site. There's a little disclaimer for the Amazon affiliate program here. And that's about it on the homepage. So let's take a look at one of the featured post here and we'll just look at the 21 great outside fire pit ideas for your backyard. So as it pops up here, we see some ads uh, right away. So a couple ads at the top over on the sidebar and you know funny thing with ads, these three right here, the one at the top and two on the sidebar, they're it's all the same. It's the same exact ad, <laughs> which is kind of funny. As we scroll down, we see this is generally going to be filled with ads. So we have some nice images here. The table of contents is collapsed off uh, the bat. So by default, it's collapsed. And if you open it up, you see that it, it takes up a lot of space. So this is actually the best way to do it is to have it collapse because if it is not collapsed, then this real estate is taken up by the table of contents here. And that means that ads cannot be shown. So that is a, a key thing right there. So we have this square fire pit with a glass uh, glass sort of beads in there. So as we scroll down, this is uh, generally an informational post giving you ideas for these different fire pits. And because there are great images, you kind of want to scroll down and see all of them. And we know from the title that there are you know, over 20 of them listed here. So you keep scrolling down and that means more and more ads are shown. And I do notice something right here. So that is Ezoic is the monetization uh, strategy here. So there's Ezoic on this specific post. And I'm gonna 
jump in and say, generally, you know, we're looking at affiliate sites, right? We're we're thinking about affiliate marketing, but really most of the time, the best move is to have informational posts that have ads like from Ezoic, for example, in addition to your affiliate product re- reviews. So if you only have affiliate product reviews, Google might not like that as much. In fact, there have been Google updates, uh, quite a few in the year 2021 that have kind of targeted affiliate sites that have too much affiliate content. So if you have informational content, if you have how-to content, you can earn money by displaying ads and Google will like your site more. Plus, in a lot of cases, an informational topic, an informational keyword is going to be easier to rank for. And that's something that Spencer is just a pure expert at because he has been doing this for a very long time, number one. And the other part is he created a keyword research tool called Longtail Pro. He's since sold it um, you know, a few years back, but he's a very, very high level keyword research expert. So let's take a look at one of the review posts that feature a product. So let's let's do something fun here. We're going to look at the best pressurized water guns, top seven picks. So again, we see uh, right here kind of a nice image. I'm not sure if it's a custom image, but I, I suspect maybe it is. It looks re- very nice. You get the right idea. It is a pressurized, and I'm thinking super soakers. I'm, I'm old, so I remember super soakers when I was a kid, and that looks uh, kind of like that. So One great thing, we have a table here. So are are you in a hurry? Here's our picks. And this is one of the reasons why affiliate sites are valuable. Sometimes people don't want to go over to Amazon, search for water guns, and you have 10,000 choices. You don't know which one to pick. You don't have time to try to curate that list. This is what the site provides. So we have three choices here, even though there are seven total. We know that from the title. There are seven total in this list, but we have we have it narrowed down to fewer, right? So we have just three in this table that we can work with. And I'm not sure if it was because of the ads, but we kind of skipped ahead a little bit there. There was a kind of hung up, which is, you know, that's one of the dangers with ads. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I have a fiber connection to my house. I'm hardwired in. I have a very fast connection, so I don't think it was any sort of connection issue on my end. So we have the table, those uh, link over to Amazon, whether I click on the image here, if I click on the title of the product or on this button so we can check the price on Amazon. Let me just scroll down. We see a nice feature box here. We have a picture of the product. We have the name of the product and a few bullet points here, as well as a link via a button. It does have the you know, the Prime logo here. I'm not sure if that is the actual Prime logo. It's always a little dangerous to have like anything that is trademarked by a big company, especially like Amazon. Can't get bigger than that. And one thing we notice uh, as far as the reviews, we have a little bit of information. You know, we talk about the, the volume of water it can hold, the age of the people that it is for, what we like, what we don't like. So pros and cons. And then we have another button, a much larger button. As I scroll down, I see that we have uh, number three listed here. And it's kind of a long title, number one. But the bigger sin is all of what is this? This is an insane feature box. So this is basically what is listed over at Amazon. So this specific plugin, I'm not 100% sure which one it is. I think it might be AAWP but I'm not sure, but it pulls the data. It pulls the bulleted list over from Amazon. So these are, this is just way too long. This number one, it looks bad. And then the formatting is a little off. And the other thing is, and I haven't read all of this in the feature box, but a lot of times, depending on the product, there are mistakes in the, in the list. So basically you end up pulling over like poor grammar, you end up pulling over typos and stuff like that. So the 
the main thing you should do with this is make it more concise. Like these should be bullet points. These should not be paragraphs. These are paragraphs. There's way too much information in this table. In fact, there's more information in the table than there is in this description and little mini review section here. So I would say that uh, you probably have an opportunity to write longer mini reviews for each one of these. And I would also, I just, I see here, um, what we don't like sometimes arrives broken. Well, it can't get worse than that. So I maybe wouldn't list this one number three, or I wouldn't note that it sometimes arrives broken, or maybe elaborate on that. So why did it arrive broken? Is it a quality control thing? Did the shipping person uh, throw it and you know run over it with their truck or whatever? So the other thing that I see here is we have the uh, super water blaster, and it says no products found. So whatever the, the plugin is doing, it did not find the product. And this ends up just being a kind of a weird section here. So no products found. Uh, so maybe, maybe it needs to be updated. Same deal here. And as we scroll down, like we may see that there are more problems. It's important to go back and update the content. Sometimes these products go out of stock. Sometimes they're completely discontinued. And if you have a site that has like 800 pages, like, like Spencer does, then you may need to have sort of a system where you go back and you you check on products, you check on certain posts and whether or not they need to be updated or not. So you can let me know if you have any specific questions on this teardown on the site or anything like that, leave a comment and potentially I can answer your question with another video or pull some of the questions together. Don't forget, you can get more information over at Niche Site Project. There's a link in the description. And in fact, you can sign up for my email list and I can send you all my templates and systems. And some of those templates and systems are related to hiring writers, writing the content yourself, building a team, scaling up, those types of things. By the way, I'm Doug Cunnington. I blog over at Niche Site Project and occasionally I make some YouTube videos like this one. And if you dig these teardowns, be sure you subscribe. Have a look at the channel. I have several other teardowns that you can check out.